Well, a biotech company called Colossal just announced something wild. They say they've brought back a dire wolf from extinction. But did they really? What they've really done is way stranger, and maybe even more important. Their team has just created a brand new predator. Not a clone, not a revival, but a new species. These cute cubs are built from gene-edited wolves, shaped by ancient DNA and born through cutting-edge biotech. So wait, are the Jurassic Park horrors coming for us? Well, let's see. Now, direwolf was the massive muscular predator that roamed North America thousands of years ago. Most people think these were just some sort of bigger gray wolves. But don't be tricked by appearances and the name. In 2021, a landmark study came out. A team of researchers and major institutions studied actual direwolf DNA and discovered something shocking. These guys weren't just big gray wolves, not even close. They were separate animals. Genetically, dire wolves split off from wolves roughly 6 million years ago. Just to put that in perspective, humans and chimps split about 6 to 7 million years ago. So dire wolves and gray wolves are as different from each other as we are from chimpanzees. They look similar because of the so-called convergent evolution, when two species evolve similar traits because they live in similar environments. Think of sharks and dolphins, both streamlined, both predators, both ocean hunters, but different animals, and dolphins are way cuter. So Colossal said that they revived this animal, a dramatic and bold claim. But it's not quite true. In reality, they genetically engineered a new kind of wolf. It's not a dire wolf, it's not even a known species. It's a synthetic animal, one that's never existed before. And this is a massive deal, both incredible and terrifying. The company basically has taken gray wolves and modified their genes by mixing them up with some dire wolf DNA they found. Which is kind of wild, because as we said, these two animals aren't really relatives, they're completely different species. The Colossal Company kind of ignored that, though. They say the gray wolf is the closest living relative to a dire wolf, and that the data proves it. But what data? They haven't shown it so far, it's just a claim. Why are they even calling this a dire wolf? Well, they're saying their cubs are close enough to a dire wolf and maybe fill the same role in an ecosystem. Basically, if it behaves like a dire wolf, walks like a dire wolf, and preys like a dire wolf, doesn't that count? Hmm, sounds kind of dire to me. Well, if we're being honest with words, then not really. Biologically, genetically, evolutionarily, this is now a modified gray wolf. So, how good or bad is it? Let's figure it out. The good part is that the research like this might help us restore the planet's ecosystem and ecology. Colossal and similar teams are trying to develop technologies that could be used for especially important causes. We don't notice it in daily life, but species are quietly, constantly disappearing. Scientists estimate that over a million species are at risk right now. When ecosystems lose a species, especially because of humanity's actions, it's like pulling out a block of a Jenga tower. Too many missing blocks, and the whole thing wobbles. But Colossal believes that if we can't bring the exact block back, we can create one that fits closely enough to stabilize the structure. For example, they've also worked on cloning red wolf coyote hybrids. This might help repopulate U.S. ecosystems where red wolves once thrived. All the tools these scientists invented might even help with currently endangered species. Another genuinely mind-blowing part is that scientists working with Colossal found real, usable DNA from dire wolves. That alone is a massive achievement. We do have dire wolf fossils, tons of them from the La Brea tar pits. Hey, don't stick your toe in there. But those fossils are soaked in tar. Because of that, their DNA is usually ruined. But the team managed to find some dire wolf bones that are over 12,000 years old. These specimens gave researchers enough material to begin building a dire wolf genome. Not a full one, but a basic blueprint. Even if we ignore the wild new species part, this achievement is still huge because it'll help us study the extinct dire wolves in more detail. We might now learn more about this animal than we ever did before. It's literally molecular archaeology. Now, all this is great, up to a point. The controversial part is, of course, the Jurassic Park one. We're not just preserving species anymore. We're starting to pull some shenanigans with it. Of course, this immediately raised tons of concerns. 
both regular people and scientists are now debating heavily about this and show a lot of skepticism. Another problem is that actual ecosystems are way more complex than Jenga puzzle pieces. They're full of moving parts, millions of them, all adjusting to each other constantly. So if you throw a new type of wolf into the mix, it won't react exactly the way a dire wolf once did. The times have changed, the ecosystem has changed, the extinction happened, nature adjusted, and throwing these cubs into the wild now might be even more destabilizing. That's why these new wolves aren't being released into the wild. They won't be hunting bison or roaming ancient grasslands. That world is long gone. Their prey is gone. Their ecosystem is gone. Instead, they'll stay to live in the lab. But if we do start to put our own animals into the ecosystem one day, what happens when ecosystems start depending on human-made species to survive? Well, it's like I always say, it's nearly impossible to science your way out of a situation that you behaved yourself into. If you can't change the behavior, the science might only be flashy and not the solution. Anyway, all these are hard and important questions. For now, we might at least exhale with relief that no one is bringing the dinosaurs back, yeah? DNA doesn't survive more than one and a half million years, and dinosaur fossils are stone now, not cells. You can't clone from stone. But what about animals that vanished more recently? Creatures that once lived during the Ice Age or even just a century ago? Those are within reach. The most famous example is the woolly mammoth. These shaggy giants once stomped across the tundras of the north, shaping nature by knocking down trees, flattening snow, and fertilizing soil. Their disappearance helped turn thriving grasslands into mossy carbon-trapping bogs. Now scientists want to take preserved mammoth DNA from frozen remains, compare it with elephant DNA, identify the key differences, and create a new hybrid. Kind of the same thing we did with these new dire wolf cubs. It would be a cold-resistant, tundra-stomping, woolly-coated mammoth elephant. Like that. These guys would be close enough to fill the ecological niche that mammoths once held. Then there's also the passenger pigeon. Once the most abundant bird in North America, flocks so massive they could block out the sun, but we hunted them to extinction by the early 1900s. The last one, named Martha, passed away in a zoo in 1914. But we have her DNA preserved in museum samples. And today, using AI and genomics, scientists are working to recreate a living bird that behaves like a passenger pigeon. These birds could help regenerate forests, spread seeds, and restore a part of the lost sky. And finally, the Tasmanian tiger, a striped wolf-like marsupial that once roamed Australia. It was hunted to extinction in the 20th century. But its DNA is abundant. Museums collected pelts, fossils, and even preserved pups. This one was a keystone species, a stabilizer, a hunter that helped keep ecosystems in check. So they want to restore this one as well. The idea is to bring back extinct species using artificial intelligence, genetic sequencing, and the rapidly growing toolbox of biotech. But all this has to be done very carefully. Otherwise, the species could destabilize the environment instead of helping it. Now, on the good side, even if we never bring a mammoth back, this research is already saving lives. For example, the northern white rhino. There are only five left, and only one male among them. Extinction is practically written into their future. But using preserved cells and cloning techniques, scientists are working on rebuilding the population. In any case, it looks like we're entering a new era of biology, and this discovery is going to start a conversation that will be going on for decades. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.